Right then. Here we go. My theory on what the hell is going on in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Obviously expect spoilers for the entire series as it currently stands. And also wish to apologize for having this video come out a bit later than I expected. I did want it out sooner than now. So by now I'm sure you've watched the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 trailer. And it is very, very obvious that Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2's worlds have somehow merged together. We definitely see several locations and design styles from both of the games, returning characters, all that good stuff. We definitely know that is a thing. But while I'm sure many people would then therefore be talking about the theories and the possibilities in videos, forum posts, Reddit, you know, about the implications of what these two worlds merging actually means and the battle lines that could be drawn up and why. My reaction to the trailer was actually, this world is mirror. So what the hell is mirror may be a common thought, unfortunately. So let's start with the very basics and explain in very, very simplish terms where Xenoblade Chronicles 1, 2 and X worlds are actually set, how they came to be and where they are at the end of their stories. I do repeat, very simplish, very, this is a primer. So for Xenoblade Chronicles 1, it all begins in the orbit of Earth, when Klaus, a scientist, tries to unleash the power of an artifact known as the Conduit in order to birth a new universe, which um, seemingly destroys Earth and creates the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 in the process. That's a hell of a big oops on his part. But this world is comprised of two titans known as Maconis and Bionis battling it out in an endless sea until one day they essentially become dormant and life and civilization begins to thrive on both of these titans with their own internal and external strives taking place. Now Xenoblade Chronicles 2 actually takes place on the Earth thought to have been destroyed by Klaus's experiment and has now been covered in a cloud layer called the Cloud Sea. Civilizations have now sprung up in some degree similar to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 where they live on giant titanic beasts and have come to know this world as Alrest. At the end of both Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, it appears they essentially have new worlds and land masses to explore out there and a bright future awaits them due in part to Alvis sort of making amends for Klaus's experiment. Okay, so that's Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 out the way. So we come back to what is Mirror? Mirror is the world on which Xenoblade Chronicles X is set. In Xenoblade Chronicles X, it starts off on Earth of 2054 which has been caught in the crossfire between two alien races, the Ganglion and the Ghosts. This is going to quickly lead to the destruction of the human race, again. In order to avoid humanity's destruction, multiple Ark ships are sent out in hopes of humanity finding a new home in the stars. But many of these do not make it out of Earth's gravity. Jump ahead two years later, and we're following one particular Ark known as the White Whale. It's being pursued by the Ganglion forces and is under attack. It is badly damaged and as a result of this is forced to land on a nearby planet. This planet eventually comes to be known as Mira and is the future home of the survivors of the White Whale. But at the end of the game you are left with quite 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 a few questions. Let's let's put it like that. Quite quite a few questions. But the ones relevant to this theory that we're going to be bringing up is what exactly is Mira? And who are the Samarians? Now this was a race that was mentioned at the end of the game. And states that they arrived at the birth of the universe from another plane of existence. And is said to be the ancestors of the human race. So, we have Mira, the Endless Sea, Alrest, aka Earth, and another Earth? So obviously there's an issue here. There's two Earths with two different stories of what happened to them and how they ended up being destroyed. It doesn't quite tie up, so therefore you'd obviously think Xenoblade Chronicles X doesn't take place or isn't connected at all to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or 2. It just can't possibly fit. Right? 
Well, I think all of us were deceived, for another Earth was made. So obviously, we're not just going to be like, well, let's do simple conjecture on the train and be like, yep, it's Mira, we're done. That's it. We don't need to prove this at all. No. We're going to get evidence to support the claim before we talk about how I think it all fits together. So, let's look at here Primordia. Primordia is a sort of area on Mira, but dotted throughout the landscape, you do notice these domes that look a hell of a lot like Lithurian Titans from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And you do actually see them in the trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now let's jump over to Oblivia, another location. You'll notice there's a giant ring in this area. It's very prominent. You see it even from Primordia. You can just see that it's there. But it does look very, very reminiscent. Almost identical, you might say, to part of the Maconis' shoulder. Very, very similar. Then you consider the fact that there's an area up in Oblivia where there's sort of like a floating island area and there's a sort of sea there called King's Falls. There's a waterfall that comes down. It's, it's quite a lovely area in this desert wasteland sort of thing. This to me is very, very reminiscent of like the shoulder of Bionis and the Erif Sea. So it seems like maybe this could be part of Bionis. And then if you actually look at the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 trailer, there is a sort of desert area that has these orange trees and they do look very, very reminiscent of an area in Oblivia. Now let's move over to Silvala. Now, this was pointed out by Elementary My Dear over on Discord because this was all part of a discussion we were having with theories at one point. So very much thank you to Elementary My Dear for providing pretty much all the images that we've got going on at the moment. Any images that are coming up, pretty much provided by Elementary My Dear. So thank you very much for that. Now, Elementary pointed out that Silvalum does actually look kind of like Araya if Araya was split open. Like, this is the stomach essentially, like a dried up sea or a dried up stomach. Yeah, not not a nice thought, but still, but it does sort of fit with the idea of like how the landscape looks. There's certain bridges across Sylvan, and obviously those bridges could be destroyed as part of the story, but they are there originally and they are very reminiscent of what you see in Oriya. And we know Oriya kind of gets a a big sword go through it, based on the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 artwork. Poor Oriya, but still. There's also a Nopon village in this area that I thought, if this is Oriya, that could be where Garfont actually is located. That could be the remnants of that little village. Now let's obviously jump over to another location, Koldros. To me, this is very, very similar to Morardain. There's a lot of structures that look similar. The architecture's familiar. I won't say it's the same, because that'd be a stretch. But the whole idea of harnessing what's beneath the ground, the geothermal nature, they're even bringing up lava or magma. Can't remember which way around it is. But they're bringing it up to the surface. In an industrial nature, very, very reminiscent of Morodin. Just similar feeling to me there. Now, there's a lot more other references as well when you actually get deeper into it. There's a certain armor that's been noticed. Again, Elementary, my dear, pointed this out to me. There's this circle pattern on some of the armor that's obviously in the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 trailer. Shulk has a similar thing that he's wearing in Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. But it's also reminiscent of a piece of armor that you can actually get in Xenoblade Chronicles X very reminiscent. There are a lot of enemies that do look pretty much the same across the entire series, but there's, there's two in particular that I feel are sort of a bit too... what's the way of putting it? Special. That's, that's how it goes. Special. They're too special in terms of what they are and what they could potentially mean to the story. So you've got these creatures 
on Mira called Cantors. To me, they look very, very reminiscent of Guldos. Probably saying that wrong, but Guldos, which are from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They've even got the similar blue lights that just look like core crystals. But there's also these mechanical enemies that you have throughout Mira that doesn't really get explained from what I remember. I think they're called the Zedom. There'll be something on screen to show what they are. But they do look very reminiscent, again, of the stuff we see in Xenoblade Chronicles 3's trailer. Then you've got the character L. L is a very, very strange one. But it was pointed out to me that he does look like he's probably Indolene. I have no idea if I've said that correctly or not, but someone from Indol. So Indolene, that makes sense to me. He's blue, he's got the horns, it's just a certain similar style to him. And we know that he is native to Mira. What that means in the grand scheme of Zenblade Chronicles X, well, that's a question that goes unanswered as well. Now let's go to the more literal references that we have about the place. The big one for me is there's a quest for a legendary weapon which is literally just a nop-on version of a Monado. It looks exactly like the Monado, well not exactly, but reasonably like the Monado that Shulk used in Xenoblade Chronicles. There's obviously the Monado hairpins that Lin uses. Where she got them from, I can't remember that ever coming up, so if anybody knows, please tell me. Tatsu, the nop-on, calls humans hom-homs at one point. Tatsu's dad, is said to be a hero pawn. Now, hero pawns were only in Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Hero pawn Ricky and all that type of stuff. But this also connects to the fact that Tatsu at one point references during a quest the Frontier Village. That's only a thing in Xenoblade Chronicles 1. There is no Frontier Village in Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, how does that work? There's also a Telethia flying about. And it's not exactly an enemy. It can be. But how is a Telethia here? How could a Telethia be on Mira? Doesn't make sense, right? And the other obvious thing is this object called the Primitive Colossus Statue. Now, there's an image on screen. It's very much like, if you don't know what that is, like, you need to replay the games because look at it. Look at it, it's it's the Titans from Xenoblade Chronicles 1. How does this exist? How does this object exist on Mira? Well... Now we get into the theory. What I think's going on with this whole thing and how it could be connected. Do I think this is definite? No. Do I think it's a stretch? Yeah. But it's a theory nonetheless and it's worth getting out. I believe it's all to do with Noah's Ark. Now, the main character, or at least one of the main characters from Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is going to be called Noah. And that, that just to me has just connected so many dots as a result. Now, if we look at Xenoblade Chronicle 1 and 2's worlds, as a result of what happened, like the world ended and they were both covered in a sea. We had the Endless Sea and the Cloud Sea. Both of these worlds, in a way, came to an end and created a new world, a new universe, where Mira was part of that. And Mira, in Sanskrit, actually means ocean or sea. I believe that Mira is the original Earth, aka Alrest, and the Endless Sea combined. This is the world together. This is the world we see in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It is Mira. And the universe beyond Mira is the new world out there waiting for them. After they survive the Great Flood. The Great Flood of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. Mira is Ionios. But I feel Ionios is the Ark. Ionios is the Ark that took these people from both these worlds away from the sea to the new world world. And I also believe the Sumerians are the civilization 
that will birth from the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and spread out to the stars from Mira, Ionios, with the Homs eventually settling on the new Earth, the Earth from Xenoblade Chronicles X. But I believe the person that will do this, that will unite the two countries shown in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, will be Noah. Noah will take them from Mira, from Ionis, that is the Ark, that came from the Endless Sea, or the Cloud Sea, and take them to the New World. The world beyond the sky.